is Tom Salemi. We're here at the inaugural Aesthetics Innovation Summit, and I'm very happy to be joined by Karen Kronholm. She's the president and CEO of Cytronus. Karen, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I understand you've been uh, kind of keeping things on the lowdown until recently, and now you're emerging from stealth mode. So tell us a bit about your company. Yeah, sure. So um, we are an aesthetic medical device company. We are using a technology that's pretty straightforward and simple. We just remove skin at the micro scale. It's a bit different from some of the other technologies out there that are using mostly energy-based um, ways in which to rejuvenate the skin. Uh, we are initially pursuing um, a skin tightening clearance uh, to get out onto the market, although we believe that there's a lot of other applications we can use for our device. Um, we also recently closed on a Series B round of financing. Oh, terrific. So we're excited to have some money to continue to move <laughs> us forward with our clinical studies. That always helps. Uh, but we have treated about 80 subjects so far and so have some really great results that we're seeing in the clinic. So tell us a bit about the, uh, the Series B round. Sure, so um, we recently just closed it. We brought in about uh, 28.5 million, it was oversubscribed. Um, brought in two new investors, uh, partner fund management as well as biomatics capital. Uh, we do also have MERS as a strategic investor. They're an investor just like anybody else. Uh, and they also uh, put in a little bit more money in the round as well, which is great. So tell us a bit about the origin of the technology. Sure, yeah, um, it's actually um, out of MGH. So we have two co-founders, uh, Rox Anderson and William or Jay Austin. Um, both working out of MGH. Uh, they did the groundbreaking research uh, that actually put Citralis on the map. Uh, and we have our technology uh, licensed out of MGH as mm -hmm. well. And how, how does it differ than what is currently out there to what it does? So we're just essentially removing skin mechanically. Mm -hmm. We're not using any type of energy. And what our founders realized is that when they're using, say, an ablative CO2 laser to actually ablate or remove skin, they wondered, you know, why aren't I getting better skin tightening results? Because there should be less skin there. But what they found was um, when you're treating subjects uh, with a CO2 laser, it actually, all that coagulation from the heat of the laser actually prevents the holes from closing. Mm -hmm. So if we just remove the skin mechanically, the holes that we make initially just collapse really quickly. And so you just have less skin in the end. So we're, we're essentially, uh, removing s skin that has been damaged, say sun damaged or what have you, and uh, as opposed to trying to repair it like you would with a thermal based treatment. So mechanically, can you tell me what that means? I mean, how does that? Uh, essentially, we just take a core of skin, oh. uh, full thickness uh, dermal core of skin right out of the patient. And we do that at, at a very tiny scale, so it's a micro excision. Mm -hmm. And so we can do that in a way in which we don't see any scarring or untoward effects. Does it involve kind of a robotics technology or something? I mean, it sounds like if you're doing no, a lot of micro... No, it's automated, definitely automated, because yep. you, you definitely want to do this in a, a very fast way. We want to make sure this is practical for the clinician to do a quick treatment, make sure the device is easy to use as well. That's always very important. Uh, so we do have an automated device that removes uh, tens of thousands of these cores in our yeah. subjects. That's very cool. Yeah. Final, final question. We've, I've talked to a couple of investors about the aesthetic space and how we're seeing a lot of companies like yours emerge, creating investment opportunities for them. What is the perspective like from the startup CEO's point of view? Do you see a lot of quote unquote competition or a lot of other aesthetic startups out there in this space, does it feel frothy to you, like there's a lot more companies? From a medical device perspective, actually, I think there's very few. Mm -hmm. So um, just, you know, when I go to some of the conferences and um, trade shows that are in the space, in the aesthetic space, I actually see very few new technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think it has been harder to raise money as a med device company. Um, in recent years, it's um, I think VCs in general have tended to not be so keen on med device types of companies. Uh, I think it also helps that we are in aesthetics though, it's a cash business. Um, we can get to market a little faster than maybe a traditional medical device mm -hmm. uh, with less money to fund us to get there. So I think that's always uh, attractive about Citrellis. But to be honest, I haven't seen too many other med device companies really um, creating some innovative products um, or that I even really encountered in the, in the space while I was fundraising. That certainly helps you yes, in your, in yeah. your fundraising plans, right? <laughs> yes. Well, thanks for joining us today at AIS. Yes, happy to. Thank you.